Hi, Ryan Michael Galloway here with We Don't Need No Stinking Record Company.com. And uh, boy, boy, I don't know even quite where to start tonight, um, except to say that uh, I've got momentum going at the moment, and you may experience the same kind of thing. And uh, sometimes that momentum might pull you in the wrong direction. you got to figure out what to do with it. So, um, like I said in my, my, my uh, blurb here describing this thing, it's a little out of hand. Um, I'm getting more gigs than almost I can stand. I'm playing my face off, and that's a great thing. Uh, but it's a little like making love to a gorilla. You don't get to stop when you want to. So, um, I don't know. Working through this issue, and I'm right now at the level of a, an artisan musician. I'm, uh, when I am not sold out like I am right now, I'm selling CDs. I'm playing a lot of different places. I'm doing originals, I'm doing covers, I'm adjusting to where I'm playing, but most of that I'm trying to get around one or two or three thousand really, really good fans. And if I can do that, I'm, I will make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It won't be a problem. Um, but that's a lot to manage. It's a lot to gather. And so I'm, I'm at this club at the gig last night and uh, talking to the uh, general manager and we're having a great conversation like we usually do and I said well let's think about next month uh, you know I've been playing here Tuesdays and Wednesdays for quite a few months and I know we took a couple times off tried to rotate some other people in and what's our plan for next month because if I don't play here I'd like to play somewhere else he says oh no no you're good I want you to come back uh, for the month of June I took out of a big gulp and went, okay, that's 10 gigs. That's, that's a pretty good sale in five minutes. Um, but there's some downsides to that. I love playing the room in that it is a great laboratory for me to try out new things, whether it's original songs or covers. Um, I get to understand the psychology of this room, how it applies to some others. It's in a hotel, so there's a lot of rotation of, uh, of audience. So I get to make new fans all the time. Um, I'm probably wearing the staff out in terms of, uh, uh, you know, every time I play it, I hear a lot of the same 60 or 70 songs that I play over and over again. There's some that I play every night, uh, no matter where I am, because they're crowd pleasers and I'm going to do that. But, you know, occasionally they ask me to learn something and I will, and unfortunately it sounds like everything else I do because I'm the one performing it, so I'm sure I'm driving them nuts. The other thing I'm doing is I'm wearing out my little suburb that I'm playing in. Eh, Ryan's here all the time, we really don't need to go out and see him. Well, that's okay, I guess, because I'm mostly concentrating on um, the, this rotating audience that's coming through in the hotel. It's my job to attract them to the bar and uh, to, you know, boost the bar sales as much as possible. And, um, you know, luckily I can do that by not only doing covers, I can do some originals, and that's okay. Lots of great practice. I'm probably way on top of my game right now, better than I've ever been before in an awful lot of ways, at least as a solo artist. But I'm still going, you know, I got this momentum, and like I said before, the more you play, the more you play. And I never thought it was going to happen in one place, that the more I played there, the more I played there. But they're very used to me, uh, they like how I work into the room and integrate with their brand and everything else. And what I probably should be doing to enlarge my local audience, my the wider local audience, is not playing there as much and venturing out to other neighboring towns and this entire metro area. I mean, it's a hundred mile round trip easy to the other side of this metro area. And there's lots of fans that have never heard me. So, I am starting to push my marketing to venture out. Um, I'm uh, getting to play a, a place uh, in the, the West End Marketplace down in the middle of Dallas, Texas, which is a great thing too because there's a lot of tourists come through there. When I have CDs to sell, I'll sell them like crazy. It's a rooftop um, club, which is kind of fun, different thing to do. We'll move inside when it rains. But I'm venturing out, I'm venturing out of kind of the comfort zone. When I play one or two cities over, I'm a rock star because I'm only there once or twice a month. And uh, when I play this place over and over and over again, I'm more like a friend. And, uh, you know, i got to kind of weigh those things against each other. So I'm facing really the same thing that everybody does in their life. Immediate money is something that's really relatively easy to do, like a kid who gets a job at McDonald's before they go to college. And the long-range plan of trying to do something very big, um, like, oh, go to college, except in this case, build my brand and my own brand and, and you, know, you know, 
bring it, reel it in, make this you know a, a real life um, you know artisan musician type of uh, career. So uh, those are always fighting issues. Now, interesting thing happens when you start, and, and I'm there. I mean, I've got more gigs right now um, than I probably want. Uh, except for the fact that times are hard, and just like you out there, I'm not going to turn down work. Uh, unless it's really important for me to not to. Uh, I've got a family to support, and I, yeah, i got a day gig, i got a night gig, and I'm trying to balance it all and, and raise kids. So, um, I've been in the consulting business off and on, and that's consulting in music, but it's also consulting in, in uh, you know, uh, uh, much larger businesses that do other things, and it's around process and some other stuff that I try to bring into the music world and make your life better and my life better with it. The thing about that is, one of the things that they've said in the consulting business is, when you get more work than you can handle, raise your prices. And we're there. You may be able to raise your prices with your existing clients, or you may simply use the fact that you're booked like crazy and appear to be in tremendous demand, which you are, at a certain level, to get more money out of the new clients that you bring into your uh, uh, your realm, your market, if you will. So that's some of the things that I'm fighting through right now. Again, good problems to have. Uh, may you have the problems that I have right now. Uh, in, in that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm making good money, um, more than anybody practically that I know, um, in terms of, uh, you know, just by playing so much, it'd be nice to play half the time and make as much or more, and uh, that will be the next step in the marketing, as I push further and further out in my region, and it's not like I don't ever play 100 miles away or 200 miles away, but I need to make that, uh, you know, more a part of the plan. Uh, as I move forward because it's the only way I'm going to enlarge my audience big enough to actually make a living all the time off of it. Anyway, so that's some of my issues that I'm going through and I'm hoping that that might be some of the issues that you either get to go through or are going through now or maybe going through, you know, not too far down the road. Um, I do have books on this stuff. Uh, I've been up and down this chain a couple times. And uh, if you'd like to read a little bit more about it, say uh, the band promotion turbocharger, which is just as good for a solo artist as it is for a band, or uh, <coughs> excuse me, my Gigster Clinic textbook, uh, check it out at uh, gigsterclinics.com. And of course, I'm Ryan Michael Galloway, and this is emanating from we don't need no stinking record company.com. Thanks. <laughs>